Many of us play Star Citizen because we want to live in and experience a universe other than our own. I for one fell in love with the amazing futuristic western styles and iconography adopted by Joss Whedon's short-lived TV series Firefly, and the follow-on fan-driven feature film named after the iconic ship at the heart thereof, Serenity. This television show and movie were a love affair to the good-hearted pirates and scoundrels everywhere in and all of us who are just trying to make a living in the verse. I think each and every star citizen will tell you that they just want a ship of their own to ply their trade and be left to make it on their own. I personally can think of no ship in the game more fitting for exactly the same kind of life led by that iconic ship of TV fame. This old gamer toilet duck here, and today we'll be looking at the Drake Caterpillar. The mostly flight-ready Drake Interplanetary Large Transport Ship, the Caterpillar, is the current go-to affordable and largest modular cargo trading ship in-game. For now. <laughs> A lot more has to happen technology-wise in the Star Citizen engine and back-end before we're going to get larger ships in. And once that does happen, the whole series of ships will dwarf the Caterpillar for cargo running, to be sure. But the Cat will always be viable and popular because unlike the hull ships, it can take its 576 SCU of cargo in and out of atmosphere, and that's not even going into the extremely modular nature of the ship. With the up-and-coming promised thruster changes, landing in Atmo may be more difficult than it was previously, but still, in theory, it will always be able to go to and from the planet's surface, which means you'll have a lot more options for trading locations than with the whole series of ships, which cannot enter atmosphere with cargo. The reason for that being is the hull series of ships has all the cargo attached on pylons to the exterior of the ship, whereas with the cat, the cargo is internal to the superstructure and thus the shields of the ship, affording your precious assets protection. Plus, given the two size 4 twin turret mounts, one on top, one on bottom, and the four size 2 mountable guns on the command module, the cat's not without some claws. There are currently three versions of the cat available the base Caterpillar, the Pirate Edition, and the Best in Show. There are two questions I get all the time about my Pirate Cat. One, what's the difference between it and the Standard Edition? Is it just a skin? And two, do you actually need a minimum crew of two people to run it? First, I'll talk about the differences. I'll be honest, I thought it was just a skin. But apparently, there are some minor differences, and because there are three distinct versions, they have the ability to further modify and customize those different ships to make each one stand out a little different. For example, according to the Pledge Store, the Pirate Edition pitches, yaws, and rolls slower than the Standard Edition, and its overall speed is slower, but has a slightly faster afterburner speed. Which kind of stands to reason, considering it's supposed to be a poorly maintained reaver ship, or I mean, pirate ship. Regarding the multi-crew, no. As of now, you only need one person to fly it. Now maybe in the future, they'll add a requirement for other crew members, either players or NPCs, to man the various positions. But right now, I just always use it alone. So here's the thing. The cat is not a complete ship yet. There are a number of things the cat will do differently in the future, and to be honest, the future looks brighter and brighter for it. I've long told my friends and my org mates that I'll get rid of the cat the instant the whole sea comes out, but now I'm starting to wonder. Once the docking mechanic gets in game, you'll be able to detach the command module. I'm not sure if the intent is to use it as a quasi escape pod, or if you're intended to be able to leave cargo parked in orbit while you fly around. But either way, it's really cool. The other thing is there's a tractor beam station and at least two terminals that allow you to control and safely guide debris or cargo directly into or away from the ship. Plus, the whole point of modularity of the cargo areas means that in theory, in future, the ship could be customized depending on what you want to do. So this begs the question, how do I get one? Well, unfortunately, it's difficult to get. Right now, the primary way to get it is by going to Teach's Ship Shop on Levski and paying for it full price, which is 4.6 million Alpha UEC. Yeah, that's a lot. The standard cat isn't otherwise available right now due to its status of being a limited ship. You can unlock the ability to purchase the pirate cat by playing and beating the pirate swarm module in Arena Commander, but it took me ages to do this because 
not a lot of people were playing it, and it was buggy at the time, causing a lot of disconnects and just general headaches. But once you do complete it successfully, it will unlock the ability to purchase the standalone Pirate Cat for $295 USD in the Pledge Store. Shockingly, they don't actually have it available to rent anywhere, and I think primarily that's because it just basically prints money. It's yet another ship that by its very nature, it's just easy to make money with it. Trading, unfortunately, is not in a good place right now, so I really can't recommend sinking a bunch of money, real world or otherwise, into this ship until they get the servers and 30Ks settled down a little bit. But I can honestly say, this ship is easily one of my favorites. It has a lot of flavor and a lot of character, and to be honest, its future looks amazing. Anyways, guys, that's all I got this time, and remember, you can't take the sky from me. I'll see you next time.